Hi, and welcome back to the Down Home Podcast. I'm Elizabeth Witten, and joining me today is Down Home's own special publications editor, Tobias Romaniuk. The Royal St. John's Regatta is the highlight of the summer, and this year was its bicentenary. There's amazing food, games, charities, and of course, the races. In the August 2018 issue of Down Home Magazine, Tobias wrote The Regatta Boats, following how the boats evolved over 200 years. So the regatta was just held, and one of the big focal points of it are the races. And when it first started in the 1800s, it was whatever boats people had on hand. It was punts and whale boats and jolly rigs and the like. Can you tell us a little bit about what it looked like at the beginning? It was, and they were, you know, the time of sailboats, right? And so these were all the little boats that are on the sailboats. And the crews would get together and race each other in the harbor as a I guess the modern day equivalent would be trades guys getting together and competing. Um, so it was really a industry driven, if you could say that. Yeah, I think we have to remember that it looked so different back then from what we're used to today. Like we think it's on the lake, it's very organized, everyone rows the same boat, but it was kind of a, it, there were work boats and pride was on the line and it was just a bunch of guys going down and having some fun. Yeah, like everything looked completely different back then, right? Like the harbor was all fingers and schooners and a lot of activity. And uh, yeah, these were, the harbor was a busy place and I can't imagine what it would be like it I think the equivalent would be like going to the Avalon Mall when it's open and having a go-kart race in the parking lot while the cars are there because you got these little boats and great big boats right I think it's the rule of any kind of organization or event eventually it kind of come becomes like professionalized and institutionalized yeah it's I guess that same old story of outgrowing its roots, right? Like it started as a few different crews or a whole bunch of crews in the harbor and then became an organized event. Um, and a few years after it became an actual organized event, it moved to the lake and then became a source of pride and gambling. Yeah. And people started making using professionally made boats. It wasn't just what boat you were working on it became like it designed yeah and in a way all the boats were professional boats because back then like boat building was a trade and a, a thing whereas today it's hard to find a professional boat builder just because we're not using wood we're using fiberglass and but yeah guys started to specialize in making race specific boats and making boats that were only meant for racing as opposed to work boats that were raced. Right. And there wasn't just rivalry between the teams. It was also between boat builders, specifically between Newfoundland boat builders and the ones in Halifax. Yeah. In my research, there was a lot of references to Halifax and wanting to beat Halifax. And you get the sense that it was a matter of national pride and well, Newfoundland wasn't a nation, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and that, like, we have to beat these people from Halifax. And But at the same time, from what I understand, the people who owned the boats um, were, say, businessmen or people of means. Uh, and they would want the fastest boat because people bet on them. And they also had money riding on this. Mm -hmm. So it was... There was a financial matter there. And um, so you get this pride thing combined with this money thing. And the result is people looking for the fastest boat. Doesn't matter where it comes from. Right. And then you get uh, men like Sam Lovey specifically building a boat because he didn't want those people from Halifax having record holding boat numbers. Yeah. And that's where the pride thing comes in. And he was... Like one of, not the first, but one of the first guys to be a boat builder for the regatta and specifically say, I'm going to build a fast boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did. 
And today, the boats that are on the lake, they are the 1901 Blue Peter design, aren't they? So, But made with modern methods. Yeah, and that boat on the outside um, and in the water is exactly the same as the Blue Peter that won. It set a record in, I think, 1903 for 9 minutes, 13 seconds. Uh, that record held for 80 years. So this boat was, oh, it was built by, um, I should know this. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the guys that built the boat, Rendell and, oh, I forget the other guy's name. Um, anyways, they built a whole bunch of boats up until this one. And this was like their masterpiece, the pinnacle of boat design at the time. Uh, but the other thing is, like, it wasn't an original design. They just lifted a design from England the racing boats of the time and if you look at the timeline like it's working boats and then it's whale boats which they're this double-ended design they're really fast because they're made to chase whales um so there are a bunch of boats that were modified whale boats like stretched out lowered made fast just for racing um and those are really those were the winning designs for a while and then this guy comes in and says hey i'm gonna take this english design turn it into a local design he does it. He beats everyone. It's fast. Uh, so the modern version of that racing shell and that blue Peter was kind of the beginning of mo or not the beginning, but that is modern racing. Like you look at this boat, it still looks somewhat contemporary because really racing shell design hasn't changed that much in like 115 years. Uh, I guess they, they figured it out in 1900 and that was good enough. Right. Uh, <laughs> So the boat on the outside is the same boat. Uh, it They measured it in the water. It did a bunch of tests. It has the same like drag and the same um, handles the same in the water. The difference is that old boat was made with ribs and planks, sort of. If you look at a canoe, like an old canvas canoe, kind of that way, like that same construction idea or even like a modern punt with the ribs. Um, so that's the way the old Blue Peter was made. Uh, it's burnt. Can't look at it now because it's gone. And the new boat is the same shape, but made with fiberglass and wood veneer and epoxy. And so they, uh, they built this frame, or they built a shell upside down, and it looked like the hull. And then it's a cold, cold molded, technique and so they put the veneers on then they put fiberglass on and then they put more fiberglass on and just kept building it up until they had a boat that was the same weight right. because <laughs> with modern methods they could have made a boat that was much lighter mm -hmm. and faster with the same shape the reason they didn't is if you change the weight and the shape of the boat that original 913 record doesn't really mean anything anymore yeah you need to have some sort of standard that's kind of like universal and understood yeah and so um the guys these days when they row and they get a time that's better than nine minutes that means they're beating the blue peter time mm -hmm. so it's this continuous line of achievement i guess Right. And so you really dug into this and the history of the boats. Was there anything while you were researching that kind of you didn't expect to hear about or really surprised you? Yeah. The one story that I really liked was this crew from Placentia uh, back before the Blue Peter time. It was like the 1870s. Um, so boats were still being made locally and there were a whole bunch of Designs were still being worked out. Lengths were still being worked out. There wasn't a standardization yet. Um, so these boat builders were still trying a bunch of different things. Guy from Placentia builds a boat and with the intention of racing it in the St. John's Regatta. So this is back like 1870, whatever. There's no Trans Canada. There's no roads. There's no nothing. Um, his crew walks the boat to St. John's from Placentia, mm -hmm. races wins the race after this crazy long walk and then leaves the boat in St. John's and walks home again. <laughs> and that's the story. And 
the um the facts of it <laughs> might be a bit different in that maybe they took a cart or maybe they took a boat um i didn't really dig into it i just i like the story part that may or may not be fully true all right well thank you for talking to me today thank you down home magazine's august issue is out on stands now so you can pick it up and read Tobias Romaniak's article, The Regatta Boats. You can also head on over to the Downhome website, downhomelife.com. Thanks for listening.